experience, and uh, each of you has a variety of skills and uh, work experiences, but uh, unless I'm mistaken, uh, none of you own or manage a storefront business. So I'm wondering how you can relate to the pressure and stress of small business owners in the city if you haven't had that responsibility yourself. Uh, well, you know, I, there's a lot of different businesses in this city, and I'm not sure you're going to get a council member that's done your work in every area of, of industry. Um, but one of the jobs that we have as council members is being good listeners. You know, we sit down with people in all industries and ask them what they need, what they think, what are their opinions on various issues. And so communication is, I think, key. Um, one of the sayings that I use frequently is, you know, God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason, and we need to do twice as much listening as we do talking. And sometimes that's tough in our line of work, but it's critical that we stop and listen to people, uh, find out what they need, and then we work to try to implement that. A very good question, Mike. Um, it brings to my mind that uh, when I first got married, I had four children within eight years, and I was on a patrolman salary. And to make ends meet, I think you had to have a good business mind, especially before children went around. Anyway, uh, as a police officer, I did quite a bit of uh, traveling, obviously on my bike, <clears throat> and I encountered business people every single day. And I was uh, in tune with their, with their needs and necessities. And uh, it is difficult to have a business in the city. And uh, again, like Carl said, uh, uh, talking to these people, uh, finding out their needs, uh, uh, what their concerns are, keeping the, the street safer for them to have their businesses be successful, keeping the areas clean. And, um, and the way I, I made an impact on our businesses is they saw me several times a day. When I was assigned different zones as a bike officer, I would stop in businesses four, five, six, seven times a day, which they really appreciated. And, uh, Again, uh, as far as the business sense, I never want a business. Time is up, so thank you. I did a business with four children and the show must pay. Thank you. Mary, you're next. I like people. And uh, my Italian parents always taught me to give everyone the time of day. Let them know that you know that they are there. And I brought up with that philosophy, and that's how I approach every day of my life. I had a, um, I rent space at, at, at antique shops, and I can always tell when someone is lonely. Sunday afternoons are so long for senior citizens. They would come into the shop, never bought anything, but I always stopped to chat. And when I left, they, they came looking for me. So I, I just enjoy the interaction with people. I enjoy giving back. I was giving much. And that's what I will continue to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And thank you for the question, because I'm actually a manager for the Matrix International Trading Store on Michigan Avenue, and I know the experience that comes with managing a successful business in Schenectady. I have the experience, and I want to use that experience in City, in city Council to encourage more business in Schenectady, because we need more small business to improve, um, to drive the driving force in our economy in Schenectady, need small business. And with my experience as managing that business, I'm very successful, I will use that experience very wisely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, actually, I ran a small business, though it was a not-for-profit, for a number of years on J Street. And even though it was not-for-profit, in order to do that business, uh, I went through entrepreneurship training through the chamber and various trainings in order to do that because even though it was not-for-profit, it was still a small business that had to be run. So I know what it is like to the day-to-day -day, trying to keep a business going, to deal with your customers and everything that goes along with that. In addition, currently we're working with the business owners who are on the Albany Street Quarter, so we're in constant contact, staying in touch with them, listening to them, working with them to improve their businesses, and so whatever, um, you know, whatever way that they help that they need, be able to bring that to the table. So that's an ongoing process. So we're continu being continually involved. It, it gives me the opportunity to look at it from the business owner's point as well. 
Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Great question. In fact, I, I, like uh, John was saying, with some of the stuff that he has and the businesses that he's managed, I actually had a storefront. It was a small computer shop. And uh, I, what I did and was able to do and work with uh, was the, uh, the Small Business Council uh, for the state. They have some great tax incentives. They have great information. And providing this information for some of the storefronts that are available uh, and sharing that information with other area storefronts, I think would be very beneficial. And one of the things that I definitely want to work with is making sure that these storefront businesses, as well as other home-based businesses too, have this information readily available. There are websites that are available, and I want to make sure that they get this information out there. The city has, uh, uh, has can have, have grants available. The state has grants available. There's no reason that our city uh, store owners shouldn't take advantage of that and let people know. We have to stop giving away money to the people that are, already have established businesses Thank you and allow people to build. Thank you. For the next question, Kathleen Morgan.